afternoon. So all of you are wondering why I'm having those struggles in my hair. And I'm having those struggles because you are going to help me to tell you my story from my pain to power. And how the free therapy agenda could make this possible. But let me tell you a very amazing story. When I was in college, I was attending a soft skills training. And the trainer assigned each one of us to write their name on a balloon. Then she gathered all of the balloons, she mixed them, she put them in a room, and then she asked every one of us to find their balloon. In the beginning, it was hard because we were fighting with each other, pushing each other, because we want to find our balloon faster than other people. Then she shouted and said, Stop! And then she set a new rule. She said, Be silent, hold any random balloon from the ground, read the name of the person on the balloon, and give it to that person. Simple, yes? When we did so, all of us were able to find our balloon. And then she told us the moral of the story that those balloons are like happiness. When we are fighting to find our balloon, it would be so difficult. But when we are helping others to find their balloon, which is for happiness, it would be much easier. That was an amazing life lesson. So I said, okay, I, I want to help others to find their balloon. But a few years later, I realized something. I realized that some people have many balloons, and others have none of them. So let me explain a little. Think of someone who is a male, from a rich family, their parents are well educated, who studied in private university with three letters, I couldn't, you can relate that. And also able bodies and live in the capital. And think of someone who doesn't have any of those. But why should we talk about someone? Let's talk about me. I want to tell you that I'm a first college generation from my mom's side and from my dad's side. So, I'm the first one in my family to go to college. And this is really hard. I want to tell you that from working class family, both my parents worked in the minimum wage for years. I want to tell you that I studied in government school for primary, prep, high school, and university. I don't know if should I do it or not, but I live in the capital. So I don't have the same opportunities that people of the capital have. I still have to prevalent that I'm a male and able bodies, but it's pretty important to understand the word prevalent. And prevalent is something that you have, not because you work it so hard, but because you are lucky. So I'm lucky that I'm a male and able bodies. But all of what I mentioned is so is also I'm so proud of. But this is called injustice. But I want to tell you something else. That this is not only my problem. This is not something that I only have. There are millions of first college generations in the world. There are millions of people from working class family. There are millions of people who students in government. But is this something, if this are global or worldwide problem, if there is any solution, a global solution? And the answer is yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the 2030 Agenda. The 2030 Agenda. The 2030 Agenda is a historical opportunity for all of us to make this world a better place. I will just tell you a brief about it and then tell you how can we make it real in our lives. 
So this, in 2015, all the world's leaders gathered in New York, in the United Nations, and they decided to write an agenda consists of 17 goals and 169 targets to fight and end extreme poverty, hunger, enhance quality education and decent health care, promote justice and peace, and stand for the existential crisis of climate change. But I'm not the president. I'm not any kind of government or profession. So I'm not going to tell you the protocol of the 2030 agenda today. You can check them on the UN website. It's, it's easy. Just guys check the, way the UN website and you can find them. But what I'm going to tell you today is a real example, some example from my life, my personal example, that you can try at home safely, reasonably, and easily. Trust me, you can try them at home. We hear lots of you. So let me start with the first example. You know that next Saturday is going to be Eid al Adha. Happy Eid, guys! So, I can't say there is something that I found that annoys me. I am sick and tired that every Eid we have nasty and dirty streets because of the skin of animals. The people did throw them in the streets, and that causes a lot of diseases and problems for people. But I did something I am so proud of. And this is based on my pain, pain, P-A-I-N, it's my pain. But I, okay, so that would make many of you angry, but what I did that I volunteered with a charity in my district for more than eight years, starting from 2013 till 2021. I worked with them every Eid. I sacrificed four days of Eid to collect the skin of animals, recycle them, sell them to local industry, fundraise millions of pounds, and we were able to build the biggest hospital in Alexandria from those scan of animals. <laughs> Every summer, I'm sick and tired to see the beaches of my city, Alexandria, full of single-use plastic. And this annoys me a lot. But I did something. I volunteered with a local organization called Fantastic in my city. And they and I, together, we gathered tons of single-use plastic from the beaches of Pakistan. And we were able to uh, have a Guinness record of plastic. And we, we, uh, we avoid the marine life, a real destruction. I'm so proud of this. I was sick and tired that every Ramadan in the holy month, people are wasting a lot of food, tons of food, because they couldn't realize about the harmful practices of food waste. That's why I created for two consecutive years, this year and the last year, Zero Waste Iftar. And now Zero Waste Iftar is the model for many organizations in Alexandria. I also was sick and tired that my generation knows almost nothing about the existential crisis of climate change. And that's why I established Climate Leaders Club as I empowered more than 50 young leaders to become content creators and to spread knowledge and awareness about this existential crisis. I was sick and tired that women are struggling to become leaders in our country and all over the world, and people couldn't trust them to be leaders. That's why I co-created Women Leaders Hub, and I empowered more than 30 young leaders to become leaders and to empower other 1,000 leaders that they are now gathering on one Facebook group, empowering each other. <laughs> I was sick and tired that people who are studying only in a 
American for I did school can speak English fluently, but people who studied in other schools cannot speak the same. That's why I started an English conversation club called California Activity Club in 2015. And from 2015 till now, I empowered thousands of young people to speak and to, to speak fluently English and to be able to say who they are freely and unapologetically. I also was sick and tired of the content on social media, of negative content on social media, of harmful content on social media, of misguided content on social media. And that's why I started my YouTube channel six years ago. I uploaded more than 100 videos that were used by almost 2 million people and empowered thousands of people to know more about the 23rd agenda, to apply for quality education, and to be able to understand what really success means. I'm a selfish empire. I'm a self sick and tired, and I know you that you guys are self sick and tired of many issues. But the real answer is to work together, is to be able to collectively work with each other to end poverty, to end hunger, to enhance quality education, and to enhance health care. But I think that some of you now are asking. Why you have done those things? I have some values, but I strongly believe in those values. Some people think those are radical values. It's okay, you think that they are radical, call me radical. I don't care about that. But I want you a favor. I want you to do, to do me a favor. If you agree with my reason, just raise your hand, okay? Okay, just wait, I'll say the reason. So, I strongly believe that quality education should be a right for everyone. Raise your hand. I strongly believe that women can be leaders as well as men. Someone is not raising. I strongly believe that climate change is as an existential crisis and it threatens the future of our generation and the upcoming generation. And I strongly believe that this world will be a better place for people who are closest to pain, closest to power. Because no one is safe until everyone is safe. And no one is safe when someone is left behind. Thank you.